All right, kiddos, we're back. And this time we're gonna look at some properties of ethanol. Remember, a property is a characteristic that describes matter. And we were listed, I think, seven different properties for copper and seven properties, those same properties for magnesium, if you recall. So now we're gonna do ethanol. So here's a bottle of ethyl alcohol, also known as ethanol. Let me open up for a little bit in this beaker here and you'll notice it's a liquid at room temperature look at that it's a liquid at room temperature and it's color you know when i ask students to describe the color of something like ethanol they'll say it's white and i don't know why they say it's white it's certainly not white it doesn't look like a Oh, a piece of white paper, for instance. It doesn't look like snow. It is not white. Other people will say, well, it's clear, Mr. Hummer. The color of ethanol is clear. That's what it is. I don't know. Isn't apple juice clear? Sure it is, but it's like an orange color or yellow color. It's still clear. Clear is not a color. Clear is telling me that it's transparent, and I can see through that particular substance, but it certainly isn't a color. So something without color, there's a name for it. We call it, that's right, some of you got it, colorless. So ethanol's color would be colorless, and it's a liquid at room temperature. Aren't those two properties of ethanol? It's color, doesn't have any, it's colorless, and the fact that it's a liquid at room temperature. How about this? Let's see if it's soluble in water. Here is my beaker of water that I've had for a little while. Now, something that's soluble in water, and that's another liquid, we like to use the term miscible. We say it's miscible in water instead of a... Oh, a fancy term for soluble in water. How do you tell if two liquids are miscible in each other? Well, if I pour some alcohol into the water and swirl it around, I don't see layers like I would if I had put oil in water, do I? Yeah, the alcohol is miscible or soluble in water. So it turns out a property of alcohol, ethanol, is that it is soluble in water or miscible in water. There you go. All right, let's see. What's our next property? Oh, does it sink in water? You know, we really can't tell now because it dissolved in water. So we're going to have to put a question mark in our guided notes related to whether or not it's denser than water. Now, if you remember the first lab we did, couldn't we find the mass and volume of ethanol? If we knew that, couldn't we calculate the density of ethanol and then make a determination as to whether or not it is denser than water or if it's less dense than water? If it's less dense, we would see it float on the surface. If it's more dense, it would sink. But we have to put a question mark there because, boy, it dissolves when I put it in water, so I can't tell if it sinks or if it floats. Rats, can't have all of our questions answered today. How about magnetism? Get my neodymium magnets here. Remember how magnetic they were? Attach them to that little... My, my, my crucible tongs here. I'm gonna put the magnets inside the alcohol. Then I'm gonna pull them out and we're gonna see if the alcohol sticks and is pulled up by the magnets. You probably know what's gonna happen here. Absolutely nothing. No, alcohol's not magnetic. You can even see some of it dripping off, can't you? So that's a property of ethanol. It is not magnetic. How about will it react with hydrochloric acid? So, this is my beaker of hydrochloric acid right there. I've had that out now for a little while. Remember when we saw the magnesium and hydrochloric acid, we saw gas forming and it got warm. Let's go ahead and put the alcohol in the hydrochloric acid. We'll see if we're gonna get a reaction here. You ready? So we'll look for a gas forming. Maybe it would get hot or cold. It could form a precipitate maybe, or uh, um, maybe we could see a color change. So here we go. Um, yeah, certainly not hot or cold. It seems to be the same temperature. Looks like it dissolved quite well in there, but um, sorry guys, ethanol does not react with hydrochloric acid. Nevertheless, isn't that a property of ethanol? It does not react with hydrochloric acid. Okay, the last one. Let's see if it is flammable. So we'll put a little bit more in this beaker. We'll make this a bit more exciting. Well, maybe I gave away the answer. Let's put some ethanol in that beaker. And this time, let's go ahead and pour it on our tabletop here. Huh? And let's make sure you guys can see it. And we have a little lighter here. And we'll see if ethanol is flammable. 
You ready? So I'm gonna light my, my <laughs> I'm gonna light my lighter and just touch it to the alcohol. We'll see if it burns in air. That would be a property, wouldn't it? It would be a characteristic that describes alcohol, whether it's flammable or not. So here we go. What do you guys think is gonna happen? You think it's gonna burst into flame? All right, let's see. That would be fun if it did, wouldn't it? I have a fire on my desktop, <laughs> that'd be really cool. All right, here we go. Isn't this great? Isn't this just fun to be at home watching this? All right, here we go. Whoa, boy, you're right. It did burst into flames. So I would say a property of alcohol, ethanol, is that it is flammable. It burns in air. That's much more exciting than copper that was non-flammable. What do you think about compared to magnesium? Now, this one's sort of cool, too. Do you have one? Do you have a favorite, maybe? Yeah, I don't either. They're both pretty cool. So the last property for ethanol is that, yeah, it burns in air. It's flammable. Okay? Do you all know what a property is now? Remember, it's any characteristic that describes matter. I've given you seven properties for copper, magnesium, and now ethanol. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.